Japan chapter collaborates with local restaurants to provide vegetarian meals. China City volunteers conduct home visits in Shandong to greet families in need. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. In the beginning of this show today, we take you to our neighbor country. First, as the COVID-19 pandemic has been gradually under control in Japan, the Japan chapter has restarted the hot meal distributions twice a month since June. With high standard epidemic prevention measures, they invited restaurants to make vegetarian lunch boxes for the homeless people on the street. City volunteers walked into the Yoyoji Park after the rain now for sightseeing, but to visit the people with the lowest socioeconomic status. She has stopped to offer food for the homeless due to the epidemic. This June, they've restarted, and volunteers have kept a social distance, sprayed the alcohol, and distributed masks while giving out lunch boxes. <laughs> The delicious vegetarian lunch boxes were from a famous Chinese restaurant, and it's also the first time it offered all vegetarian meal. Today, I've made all this joyfully, and I woke up early in the morning. I've also prepared all night till very late, and I've made about 150 to 160 lunch boxes. These few months were hard for restaurants, so I thought to work with them. On top of giving them some incomes, we hope to let them know how to promote vegetarianism. Now the restaurant owner let Siji buy the food ingredients and made over a hundred lunch boxes without asking for a return. The epidemic has affected the restaurant's business. As a volunteer, I saw that Suji has put in so much effort to serve the society. So I was very touched. Hopefully the epidemic can end soon and everyone can live a better life. We long for this warmth in the lunch boxes, and we hope the homeless people could be touched through these loving lunch boxes. This is our greatest expectation, also a power for them. Volunteers provided food for the homeless for two days in the early summer in hopes that they can feel the love and warmth under the sunny weather. In the Philippines, Manila implemented a city lockdown due to the pandemic and many residents were stuck in the city and unable to return their hometown. Moreover, many even had to sleep under the bridge or on the streets. Considering that many local residents were facing financial crisis, city volunteers in the Philippines have begun to distribute rice to help the impoverished families. Ryan left his hometown to work in Manila, but the epidemic has caused him to lose his job and be unable to go home. Fortunately, the community commissioner offered him a job to solve his problem. There were about four to five people stuck in Manila due to the restriction orders. They insisted on going home at first, but the society was locked down, so they can only stay here. However, they don't have relatives or friends here daily, so they can only sleep under the bridge. I'm thankful to Joseph's help because without his help, I might not have a place to live or I might still be hungry and have to sleep under the bridge. Ryan's case is just an epitome in this pandemic period. Many families are facing food shortage, and Filipino city volunteers hosted several rice distributions in different areas. I'm very grateful to Tsuji and their rice for timely help. I can finally have food to eat. 
To prevent the epidemic, volunteers have worn the mask during the distributions and kept a social distance. They made sure everyone received 25 kilograms of rice. I have a big family and we consume about two kilograms of rice every day. I'll try to find veggies and other foods because we don't have a choice when we are hungry. I'll try to solve their hunger first and my family didn't complain about the situation now. We truly believe that Sidi's mission is to help people because it's not the first time Sidi has helped us. You have offered assistance right when we encounter a fire accident before. No matter emotionally or physically, you have shown us great love and care for us selflessly. People who receive the aid supplies also hope to reciprocate the love because they want to do good deeds regardless of whether they are wealthy or not. Complying with the Ministry of Health and Welfare's new southbound policy, Hualien Tsuji Medical Center has provided training to Filipino doctors. Since August of 2019, four Filipino doctors have come to Hualien Tsuji Medical Center to undergo training for a year. Recently, the conference was held for Filipino seat doctors, and the four doctors share what they learned in Taiwan. Four Filipino doctors have gone through training at Huali Medical Center for a year. They acquire knowledge on advanced stem cell transplant, setting up stem cell data bank, hepatic biliary pancreatic surgeries, and glaucoma surgeries. Although we cannot really communicate well because I don't know how to speak Mandarin, um, the nurses uh, or my mentors would translate them for me so that I was able to communicate with the patients as well. The chairperson of Manila Economic and Cultural Office also delivers his best wishes through video conferencing. The knowledge that you have imbibed here will be of invaluable help to our countrymen. A Filipino blood disease patient shares how he has sought medical attention at Hualien City Medical Center. He has gone through a haplo-identical stem cell transplant with the help of his son. Knowing that Dr. Anna has received related training, he can do follow-ups in the Philippines in the future. Anna has learned the advanced stem cell transplant, or haplo-identical stem cell transplant. Since there is no stem cell data bank in the Philippines, when the patient cannot find a matching donor among his siblings, we can conduct stem cell transplant with half-matched donors. A father can donate his stem cells to his child or vice versa. This suits countries like the Philippines. The Filipino doctors have learned the most advanced medical techniques and what is needed in the Philippines. Hopefully, upon returning to the Philippines, these doctors will utilize what they learned to improve the local medical quality. Next, we turn to Malaysia, where we meet Maud Noor, who is a red hailing driver. And despite the reduction in income during this time, he continues to go out each day to make money. Oh, in the name of his adopted son, Salman, though the two are not related by blood, they see one another as father and son. The appearance of the novel coronavirus has devastated the world's economy. Many different work sectors are thus affected and ride-hailing services are not exempt either. Beginning on March 18th, the Malaysian government put a strict movement control order on the country. And though it has since been lifted and the country is now in a recovery movement control order, many people have gotten used to not leaving their house if unnecessary. My customers have drastically reduced. Normally, I can pick up at most 22 per day. And now if I get 10 rides, then it's a good day. On low-income days, Noor makes just 20 Malaysian ringgits, which is not even 5 US dollars. However, he still insists on going out each day to work because Noor wants to provide for his son. 54-year-old Noor adopted Muhammad Salman when he found out his biological parents could not raise him. To give the child a better environment, Noor even quit his job as a security guard for the mortuary to begin as a ride-hailing driver, as that makes more money. While Salman is not related to Noor by blood and Noor doesn't express his feelings towards Salman often, the two have a great relationship together. <laughs> Treat dia macam 
He listens to me and I treat him like my own son. I don't have anyone here in Penang. It's just him and I see him as my own. He calls me Papa. If he was to be taken away from me by the Social Welfare Bureau or something, I don't know what I would do. I cannot be apart from him. The two have been together for six years and have never celebrated Father's Day nor know what the day is about. The only thing Noor cares about is having someone by his side each day. Having money does not make a good person. If you are a good person, you will want to help people. I just want him to be a good person. He loves me and I love him too. He's working for me and takes care of me. Happy Father's Day. Thank you, Papa. It is very clear that these two love one another like father and son, despite not being biologically related. Another real father and son pair in Malaysia due to the epidemic, a son who studied in the United States reported his safety to his parents through video chats. Although this pair of father and son are not good at expressing their inner emotions, they all express the love and care for each other in their own ways of actions. Here's their story. Because I am a teacher, the expectations for my children's success will be relatively high. Later, after teaching for several years, I learned that every child has different abilities, not necessarily to have great academic achievements, so I let my children develop freely. Tua Tongru retired from the school vice principal. In a family of five, he played the role of a strict father. I get along with my children like friends. My husband is very strict with the children, so they show more respect to dad. Hi, boy. What time is that? Oh, the oldest son, Chua Sen Yu, at the age of 21, went abroad to study. Even though he has been away from his family for many years, he still insists on taking the time to contact his parents. Okay, thank you. The blessings from a long distance are all sons love and miss for his father. For the past eight years overseas, I have been homesick. I miss my family in Penang. I've been very busy studying for a doctorate in recent years. And plus, due to the epidemic, I cannot leave the United States and go back to Malaysia to reunite with my family. If I see the people around me uniting with their family, I felt very sad. We also told our son that if he wants to continue studying in the United States or other career development, we will support him. Both of them love each other, but neither of them will express it. I'm proud of my eldest son. He is very independent and he is a perfectionist. Be it Father's Day or Mother's Day, though it's only one day of celebration, as long as he can give us peace of mind, it is good enough. China and city volunteers have started to deliver warmth in the winter as early as in June. Recently, Beijing and Suzhou volunteers have traveled to Qingyun County in Shandong to conduct home visits. Although it's the first time city volunteers are visiting these families in need, they feel like they've been old friends. Let's follow their steps.
The volunteers are delivering warmth in the winter early in June. Sixteen volunteers accompanied by Qingyun County government officials have started their home visits. We are from Beijing, Suzhou, and some of us are local. We are doctors, university students, and entrepreneurs. We are all volunteers on the same team. We've come to visit you. 65-year-old Ma Hongxiang lives by himself. He's very optimistic. He's happy that in this hot season, he has met these people who care about him. Now that you have come to visit me despite the hot weather, I'm very happy. The weather is hot, isn't it? 58-year-old Zhou Zhushan suffers from pelvic bone necrosis for more than 10 years. When the volunteers told in the news, he was very excited. Next month, Ziji will hold a large free clinic in Qingyun. By then, I hope he can go and seek medical attention. The free clinic is free. You do not need to go to Jinan. There will be doctors from Beijing. Mr. Zhu, who does not have children, relies on the care of his niece. The volunteers have invited her to join the ranks of volunteers. Uh, Suji volunteers care for people regardless of their financial situation or social status. Our empowered residents are able to feel the love of society. The volunteers visit and brought love and warmth to impoverished families in Qingyun. In addition, they've inspired the government officials to give of themselves. Chengdu Ziyi volunteers held a class to teach people how to make vegetarian dishes, showing them that vegetarian dishes aren't just all leafy greens, but consist many other ingredients such as the spicy Sichuan taste mapo tofu. Let's take a look. The city volunteer heads to the market to purchase ingredients for today's cooking class. Most people think it being a vegetarian means you don't eat a balanced diet as all you eat are leafy greens. I want to let them know this is not true. Suji's vegetarian cooking class begins as they teach participants how to make vegetarian dishes at home. Today, they teach a variety of dishes suitable for adults and children to eat. Today, we made aura and mashed potatoes, which children like to eat. Then, we also made a nutritional soup good for seniors, and also mapo tofu suited to the Sichuan taste. This small in-person class helps to convey our sincerity and passion. I believe this is not something that one online video can do. A taste of the hot soup has exposed this person to a new palate. Normally, Sichuan cooking is heavy, heavy on the oil and heavy on the salt. But after today's class, it makes me feel that vegetarian food can be light and refreshing. Helping to plant seeds, Ziji volunteers in Chengdu held a successful vegetarian cooking class. Have you experienced farming before? In modern society, people are pursuing healthy eating habits. As too much meat consumption leads to cardiovascular diseases, people have to turn to plant-based diets. Since the epidemic broke out, more people have been planting their own vegetables for consumption. Many people have tried planting vegetables on balconies or backyards to pursue a healthier living lifestyle. As the spring goes in Taipei in spring, one moves forward along the mountain road and reaches a beautiful and secluded place. In the terrace field surrounded by the mountains, there are all kinds of plants that are the hard work of the city farmers. I think the view is pretty nice, and people are planting vegetables, so I thought of planting vegetables for myself. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, people have gone out less. The epidemic has affected people's lives. The farm owner, Mr. Guo, has discovered that more city residents have come to plant vegetables and fruit. 
There are about three to four green peppers and small tomatoes. The tomatoes are very sweet, salt, and has a special local flavor. Meanwhile, City Agriculture Cooperative has found that people buying seeds have grown 30 percent. Currently, in spring and summer, people plant mostly leafy vegetables and lemons. For leafy vegetables, adults like lectors, children like tomatoes and strawberries. After the epidemic broke out, many people in foreign countries also tried to plant edible plants on their balconies or in their courtyards. I live on Toronto in Canada. This province is the province with most population. On March 24th this year, when the pandemic situation was dire in the United States and Europe, the entire country was under lockdown. We are the province closest to New York. Because it is closest to the area with serious pandemic situation, in the beginning about 500 new confirmed cases were found each day. To reduce human contact, he did not go downtown. We call this Taiwanese zucchini. In fact, they are Italian zucchini. Yesterday morning, the temperature dropped it to 4 to 5 degrees Celsius. When it is cold, we need to cover them to avoid forest damage. People in Taiwan have also started to grow vegetables because of the epidemic. I'm interested in this. The vegetable I plant are real. Sometimes I can test the sweetness and aroma of vegetables. As the pandemic situation continues to worsen, the people who come to plant vegetables have not decreased. They seem to increase slightly. During the epidemic time, people have to change their living habits. Some of these changes are beneficial. At least people's gap with the nature has been abridged. Returning to the nature is the basic concept. As they plant vegetables, seeing the fruit of their hard work brings a sense of achievement. The pandemic has led to inconvenience and panic. However, it also made many people reconsider their way of living. Korea TG volunteers made vegetarian zongzi for the care recipients and members on the Dragon Boat Festival to promote Chinese culture in the foreign land. Take a look and wish you a happy holiday. Goodbye.